Um, so hi everybody, my name is Josh Welchel. Um, I am considered, oh, hello. I'm considered by some to be a indie game composer, if that's a thing, I don't really know. Um, I just basically am gonna cover a few of the basics of what I do, why I enjoy what I do, and how I got started, and how I think it's, any one of you could do the same thing if you're interested. Um, I'll talk about how the dream life of being a composer is not really quite such a dream life, but it's, it's still fun and it's rewarding. And almost like anything else you can do in life, it's something that you have to work hard at and pursue and all that other cheesy stuff that I'm sure you heard in fifth grade science class. All right. Um, so first of all, a little bit about me. I'm a student at the College Conservatory of Music. That is a pretty strict, uptight conservatory in the, at the University of Cincinnati in the uh, middle of Bufu, Ohio. It's, um, it's where you, know, you take piano lessons every day, you have to sing, I have composition lessons I study, um, but I've been doing this long before I ever studied music classically, or as strictly as I do now, so I don't feel that it's something that somebody necessarily needs to do what I do. Um, my friend Daniel Baranowski, does anybody know that name? No. Good. So he, um, he wrote the music for Super Meat Boy, which just recently came out. He should be joining me, he just had his flight in at four o'clock, so hopefully he'll be here. Um, and after my panel, there's another panel called From, From Hobby to Professional, and it has to do with kind of going from where I leave you off to becoming a professional, and that's hosted by Jimmy Henson, Andrew and Jill Aversa, and Will Roger, who works for LucasArts, and they're all, they've all worked at AAA titles, so that's pretty exciting. Um, so besides being a student, I'm also a, like I said, a composer for games, media, and film, and I am right now, I'm on the audio jury, for the Independent Games Festival. Is anybody familiar with what that is? It means? It's okay, I'll save it. Okay. Is anybody familiar with the Independent Games Festival? Yeah. Yeah? That was rousing. I need it to go into the mixer. Will it go into the mixer? It's gotta go to the speakers. It's gotta go to the Oh, you need to, yeah, it's the oh, Sorry about that. Um, the Independent Game Festival is a, it's a sublet of the Game Developers Conference that's hosted in this February. And it's where indie games, that's like where World of Goo, um, Cannibal, all those games that got pretty popular pretty fast that are on the smaller realm, not AAA titles necessarily. Um, and this here to my right is David Celesco. He's a Swedish composer and he wrote, he worked with Derek Yu who went on to, um, he made Aquaria with Bitblot and um, uh, Alec Hologua. And he, David here, worked on the soundtrack to Eternal Daughter, which was a big independent freeware game. Um, and I'm actually hosting a panel on Saturday that we're just gonna cover independent game music, like a 101. I kind of hoped the order of these two panels would be flip-flopped, unfortunately they weren't. So um, I'm just gonna see what happens. And I'm waiting on an audio cable because I did bring some stuff to show you guys. Um, but in the meantime, there's my blank slide. Here's some stuff I worked on, I'm just gonna be real quick. Um, I worked with Ubisoft on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Flash game. I worked with MTV on a VMA 2009 Moon Man dance off, which was pretty much a dance dance revolution like rip off for like the arrow keys on your keyboard. It's pretty awesome. Um, I've written music for a web series called Dorm Life. I've worked with, um, and several, these are mostly Flash games. The Spirit Engine 1 and 2 actually are how I got started. And I'll go into a little more detail about those last three later on. Um, so, so getting started, and I, I want everybody to know, I'm very approachable. If you guys have a question, or I'm starting to sound pretty stupid or something, just raise your hand, let me know. Um, I'll be quick to answer, and hopefully I can help you guys out. Um, when I got started, I started in what's called the Click community, and what I've written here is Click and Play, is because that was the first generation of a series of software development and game development tools um, that got really popular, and that's how actually David got started as well. We both played around that, and I actually got into it because I wanted to make games, and I think a lot of people who play games and really enjoy it want to be, you know, oh hey, I want to make my first big game, and I got frustrated with that pretty quickly, and then so I got RPG Maker, and then just made the worst things you've ever, you've ever seen. Um, I had like one game where, you call it like Active Guy was the name, and he's just this little standard looking guy with red hair, and I just called it Ginger Adventures, and that was my, that was my debut title. Um, so after I started writing music for my own games and realizing that's what I cared about more, um, I went around the community and I was just like, hey, do you guys need music? I wasn't, you know, a lot of people associate 
composers who are trying to get into the business with these people who, I mean, it's almost like listening to a band. Like, you go to a party and a guy is like, here, listen to my CD, I'm so good. Like, that's, that's tacky, you don't want to be that person. But at the same time, there's an issue with visibility and you need to make sure that you're out there. So I went around to the forums and I was like, hey guys, I really want to write music to, um, to some game. And so I put a few demos, because I was writing for fun with a tracker and just enjoying myself. And uh, the first game I ended up actually writing was a game called Nekobot, which is just like this little bouncy ball on a platform. And he looked like a little cat. He had hilarious sounds, and it was a pretty tacky soundtrack. And I'm, I'm going to play some samples at the end. Um, I don't want to interrupt the flow. It's ooh, so intimate. Um, I went on to write music for a game called The Spirit Engine, and I worked with one producer on that game, and he was the artist. His name was Mark Pei. And he got very popular very fast and ended up making a sequel, as you can see a little bit further down. And that sequel was a commercial game, and uh, it got, I got royalties for it, and that was my first pretty much successful commercial experience. Um, my tips for you if you're interested in this sort of thing, is anybody here interested in getting involved in this? Okay, that's, that's kind of what I'm gearing the panel towards for you guys. Um, but, but like I said, this can be for everybody. Um, you want to meet people, you want to be friendly, you don't want to, like I said earlier, you don't want to be that guy who goes to the party and throws your band CD in, because nobody wants to do that. Like, don't, don't be too aggressive with it. But at the same time, you need to be confident in yourself and in confident in your work. And you can't, I mean, you pretty much want to talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. If I were to go to David, who's working on a game, and I'm like, David, your game's awesome, you should have my music because it's awesome too, you would probably be like, screw off, kid, I don't like you. But if I were to go to David, I'd be like, David, I think your game, it looks pretty cool, and I'm, I'm interested in maybe writing for you. You have to be polite, you have to be courteous, even though these people that I was approaching at the time and that you would be approaching, they're not, I mean, they're not, you know, Squaresoft, and it's not Ubisoft, and you're not going to, like, up to these AAA, you know, platformers and, and producers and saying, hey, look, I should be your composer, because it's not going to happen. Don't, don't try to enter the, uh, the industry like that. Um, like I said, post publicly, you like contact one-on-one. -on -one. So for me, that was personal messages on forums saying, hey, look, like I said, I like your game. I want to write for it if you'd let me. And then they'll probably say, have a sample. And that's what I always said. I just emailed small samples and things that, you know, as you'll hear later, they're not the greatest things in the world, but they're there. Um, part, of, um, part of getting started is having the right tools. If you want to write music for a game and you've never written music before, it's a daunting, daunting task. Um, if you're familiar with, does anybody here play piano or any instrument whatsoever for that matter? I imagine it's Magfest. Okay. How many, uh, how many keyboard players are in the room? Four, five, six-ish? <laughs> okay. Um, I would say, hands down, by far the best keyboard, or the best instrument to play is the keyboard for this sort of thing, but it's not required. That's just because the interfaces for most of the software you're going to use involve a piano roll. David, wouldn't you say that most of these things require um, some keyboard experience? Not necessarily keyboard experience. Well, as long as you know basically how the piano or piano is layouted, you know, with the keys and what goes where, and you know, uh, it's easier. But at the same time, you know, if you're if you're willing to experiment and play around with whatever program you're using, you're 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 gonna figure it out. And if, I mean, if you play around with it, and you know, you find out what clicking where makes what noise. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna learn to navigate on, the, on a real piano as well. So, I mean, it's more or less interchangeable, but of course it does help to have some piano skills or experience. There's definitely um, a, the two different mentalities or schools of thought when writing music like this. Um, most uh, digital audio workstations, which I'll cover a little later, they either have a piano roll or you're using a, mid a MIDI interface most of the time. And for me, I, I sit there and I re-record something until it's perfect. And that just entails like, First of all, it's perfectionism, like, I'm kind of anal about it, almost to the point where I'm not productive, or I stop losing productivity. But I play everything because it gives me a sense that I understand better what I'm doing. But there are people like Daniel Baranowski, who's going to come here, hopefully. He'll definitely be here by five. Um, but um, he, uh, he does everything by hand. He uses that piano scroll where you see the left to right and clicks all the notes in. So, I mean, and I know that he's actually got more experience as a drummer, which you think, well, that doesn't have, you know, melodic aspects. There aren't pitches involved all the time. And, it doesn't really matter. So um, some of the free tools that I uh, mentioned up here, um, any tracker, is anybody familiar with what a tracker is or looks like? It's like a spreadsheet. It's, it's completely unintuitive. It looks, like, it looks like somebody barfed on your screen. It's, it's awful. Getting started, I mean, the only way I got started was with my experience. How, there he is. This is Daniel Baranowski walking in the back. 
Oh, what a wonderful crowd. Come up here. Got Jimmy Henson and Will Roger will be hosting. Is that Jill? Yeah. Jill and Andy are here. Good. They're hosting the next panel, which I was talking about. Danny's going to sneak on up here next to me. Yeah, I'm really sneaking. You're going to see me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I started with a tracker, and that was how I got involved. It was this, like I said, it's a like I said, it's a spreadsheet, and it's kind of difficult to use. Um, does anybody know Cave Story? Yeah, yeah, I like that. Cave Story he used a program called PX Tone, which he made himself, and it is. Let me switch mics with you. That's how I always sit. <laughs> <laughs> he used a program called. I'm gonna go. You're really distracted. Um, he used a program called PX Tone. <laughs> He used to program called PX. Yes, it does. <laughs> does that make you uncomfortable? Oh, it's better when you talk in the mic to me. <laughs> We've actually never met in person before, so this is a big moment we're holding it in. <laughs> oh, take it off. <laughs> um, Maybe I should go. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to teach, man. I'm trying to teach, man. So just... <laughs> Like, okay. I have two options, just like snuggle up with you or like sit at the other end of the table. Well, you put the shades on, I don't want to see your face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so PX Tone was a, just a way for him to make a chiptune soundtrack without having to. He did this whole game by himself, it was amazing. Um, other free tools, you can use GarageBand to get started, not a big deal. Anvil Studio is a Windows based thing that you can use. Question. Can that be mounted any higher? So it's kind of designed. Oh, you know, actually, I was trying to blind him a little bit to make it feel a little better. <laughs> Thank you, I didn't even notice. I'm a jerk, gosh. <laughs> um, some just lifestyle tips if you're going to try to get involved in this career. You just want to write every single day. Like, if you, like, are cooking spaghetti on the... What do you cook spaghetti on? On the freaking gr in a not the grill. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so. Um, you want, like, while you're waiting, you got a good, like, ten minutes. You might as well just go into your room, get on your laptop, and just write some music. Whatever. If that's what you enjoy to do, the best way you can build your portfolio is to just do it. Any artist will tell you that they have to draw to build up a resume. You have to do the same thing. It's, that's just what you have to do. Um, you don't want to worry about what gear you have, what gear you don't have to start. You want to worry more about the sound, and you just want to be comfortable with who you are. If you start to get frustrated and you feel limited, that's when you want to start you know, thinking about investing in some other tools. And like I said earlier, classical experience is good, but it's definitely not necessary. And, uh, I mean, Danny, you went to a music school. Community college. There you go. Yeah. And I go to a hoity-toity school, and I definitely feel like I would just want to get out of there sometimes. So I'm not saying that it makes me a better composer, because it doesn't. Um, I'm saying it makes me think differently. I wasn't classically trained as much as budget trained. <laughs> <laughs> Budget's good though, that's, I mean, that's exactly what we're talking about. You want to try to stay on a budget and you want to be able to build your portfolio without dropping, you know, every dollar you earned as a lifeguard your, your first year when you got out of high school, you know, like <laughs> I did. <laughs> well, Danny, I was the very first person you ever gave mouth to mouth to. The whole pool, man. <laughs> I'm really into it. I really have no follow Did you wear those shades? Did I? Yeah, I mean, yeah, lifeguards gotta have shades. Um, like I said, you want to start investing. Um, any do any money you put in to, to this career, most of the time you're able to make it back. So I mean, it's really frustrating to see that that, that awesome sample library you want is like a thousand dollars, and then that's on sale too. So you get this email like, we have a super budget sale. It's one thousand dollars, and you're like, oh come on. Ah. So I mean, it's really frustrating, but at the same time, it's money that you hopefully will get back. And then after that you profit, or you do it, you, re you know, repeat it over and over again, and you're always broke, like a college student should be. Um, uh, a good key, and I think this applies to everything, try before you buy. Um, start cheap, upgrade as only as you need to. Uh, most digital audio workstations, they come in tiers, like you've got Sonar, Standard, Producer, whatever else, Reason, I think Reason's actually only got the one, but it has a, has a duo. Um, Logic has Logic and Logic Pro. Even Fruity Loops now has like Fruity Loops Express, Fruity Loops Studio, Fruity Loops for crazy people. Extra fruity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 